Hello everyone. So I am going to be doing um, pretty much what I did in the last 10 videos. I'm going to pre-record all the videos today. So um, if you see me wearing the same shirt and have the same hairstyle, I promise you I changed my clothes. <laughs> I am just pre-recording because it's the easiest um, thing for me to do. That way I could just have a video prepared and ready to go day after day. Um, also, if you hear like this, this uh, like rumble sound in the video, I apologize. It's the kids next door. They are riding their bikes and they have the old school like plastic wheel, three wheeled bikes. So they're having a blast outside. Um, so today's video, my friend, I had, I was talking to a friend and I had asked her if there was anything that she'd like to see covered in these videos. She's fairly new to the world of witchcraft and paganism and things like that. She's new to this, you know, she's studying. Um, the things that she brought up were actually very interesting and I think that they will be really great to talk about because these are questions I think maybe a lot of people have and I'd rather do videos on on some things that are very useful, especially to people who are just starting out and may have questions like this. So um, I'm going to tackle these next 10 videos being those, um, those questions that she had and things that she'd like to see covered. So um, today's video is going to be on, can you work with more than one deity? And the short answer is yes, you can. Research is everything when it comes to working with more than one deity and because you want to know if they're going to work well together. You wouldn't have two deities, whether they be goddess and goddess, god and god, uh, goddess and god, um, working together if they don't mesh well or if they have a history of not liking one another. Um, for instance, I follow the Egyptian pantheon. I work with the Egyptian deities and I wouldn't call in Osiris and Set because Set killed Osiris and because he wanted to take the throne. So I would never call those two in at the same time because that would create a chaotic energy. And honestly, I don't believe I'd be able to get anything done when you call in. Your purpose would be overruled by the chaotic energy because you've just called two deities in that don't like each other, that have a history of violence towards one another, or just have a real strong disdain for one another. So research is everything. You want to get the background, you want to get the history of who you're about to work with. And it's really good to know who you're working with anyway, if you want to build a relationship and you want to uh, honor a deity or work with a deity, because some deities are more demanding than others. You have some that prefer specific offerings. So it's really great to research your deities anyway, even if you're only going to work with one, especially if you're going to work with more than one. Um, so key things are doing the research, looking up the history, the history of everything, not just those deities, really looking into the history of that pantheon, uh, the history of that location, that, that period in time, uh, really paying attention to detail um, in these things. Did they have any issues with one another? Do they, are there stories for them getting along well? Like for instance, you have in the Greek pantheon, you have Zeus, who was, you know, a god that liked to sow his oats. And Hera, his consort, was a very jealous, jealous wife. And she would go, and Zeus would sow his oats with mortals and with with other deities she would kill mortals in in the history and the stories and she would also go after other goddesses so having zeus working with you know hera might be fine but if you add in a third deity let's say for instance uh demeter or uh persephone you know aphrodite even especially aphrodite you're going to have some issues energetically. So being very mindful on who you're calling in. You want to honor them equally. Um, if you are calling in one, let's say, for instance, if you feel very familiar with one goddess or one god, 
and you're very accustomed to to working with them and then you want to call in someone else at the same time and you're not as familiar and you're not able to provide equal um, energy to them both, it's generally not a good idea to honor them at the same time or work with them at the same time. Then there comes the, the question of, should I have different altars for them or can I share an altar for them? You can share an altar if you choose. Just be mindful of the, if you're working with two different deities from two different pantheons, what is, what are some of the things you might put on your altar? Um, are some of those things going to be pantheon related? Um, give you a quick for instance I follow only the Egyptian pantheon so I have things like you know uh, crystal sphinx cats I have the eye of Horus I have the eye of Ra I have different things that I put on my altar that are Egyptian based they're the I the um if I could speak English the symbolism you know and the I forget what the word is I don't know if it's like iconography um, I believe that's what it is, is Egyptian related. So if you are honoring someone from the Greek pantheon and someone from, you know, the, let's, the, the Hindu, but you only have Hindu related items on your altar, um, this may cause uh, a shift or a problem in your energy. Not in your energy, but working, you know, in general with your deities. This may cause, you know, a little bit of, of a, uh, an energetic issue, if you will. You want to make sure that you are honoring them equally. So you can, it's a good idea to do different altars. That way you can design and decorate and really personalize that altar for that deity. And then you can make another one. It could be on the opposite side of the house, it could be on the opposite side of the room. The two altars can be side by side if you choose. Um, that way they have their own space and you can really go to town with really personalizing that altar for that deity. Um, as far as the, like I just said, as far as having the same altar or different altar, this kind of plays in. If you're going to have like altar decorations or, you know, different kinds of symbolism on your altar, if you're going to use the same altar for both deities and they happen to be from different pantheons, being mindful of adding symbolism from both pantheons on that altar. Be sure to spend time with them individually. You don't have to work with them both at the same time all the time. Really building that relationship with your deity individually on both ends or however many deities you are, you are honoring or working with. It's important to make sure that you are building that connection, building that relationship with your deity individually, separate from one another, and not just when you are calling on them, uh, when you are asking for something. Um, it's important. Now, you it's everybody to each their own, and I just want to put that out there, to each their own. There may be some people that disagree with me. Um, and that's fine. That's their opinion and they can practice however they choose. And that's one of the most beautiful things about this path is that no two people are the same and no two people have to be the same. They can do things differently. In my personal opinion, I think that it's important to build a relationship with your deity and get to know them and allow them to get to know you and really make that energy between the both of you a cohesive uh, bond. Uh, let's see, I'm just looking at my cliff notes here, my, my little side notes. Oh, be aware if you are wearing um, symbols of only one pantheon, but you are honoring deities from a different pantheon. To me, this, I feel like this could be important. Like, I'm going to show you, I have my regular pendant here, my regular pentacle, but I also have two onks. So, if I want to work with you know, or honor a deity with, from the Greek or Roman pantheon. I think that it would be mindful for me to remove these. It's not necessary, but maybe, you know, you don't have to really wear anything, but I, I just feel like where I have such a connection 
with the Egyptian deities that I that I do honor and that I do work with if I wanted to kind of break into this world of uh, the Greek pantheon for me I feel like I would want to take these off and put them where I put all of my my sacred jewelry that way I have like almost this clean energy going in because because I do feel I want to be able to build a connection with a different deity without um I just I feel like there there could be it's and I feel like maybe they don't feel it as disrespectful but for me and this is just my opinion and this is just my advice and you can take it or leave it but for me removing any pantheon specific jewelry you know might be a good idea um, do any of your deities that you work with already prefer to be alone or do any of the deities that you want to work with prefer to work alone there are deities that prefer to be honored and worked with alone and do not work well with anyone and this is regardless of history there are some deities that do not want to be paired with anyone else this is why research again is so important making sure that you do not conjoin or have two deities working together and one of those deities really doesn't want to be bothered with any other deities and prefers to be worked with um, alone. So that's where that's why it's important to do that, that research. It's good to learn about the whole pantheon and every deity in that pantheon um, that you want to work with. I feel like this is important because when you read about one deity, you're getting that deity's perspective. You're getting the history of that deity. With every single deity after that, that you study and read about and acknowledge and, and, and really learn the pantheon for what it is, you get little bits and pieces and then you can put all those bits and pieces together and create this, this idea of, of, of this understanding, I should say, this understanding of this time and this pantheon and this place and how everything worked and and how everything was was believed and, and honored back then and you know so i this is why i think it's important to if you want to work with isis or osiris knowing that osiris and isis are consorts that they are together that's fine if you want to work with them but really seeing how connected they are to other deities and really seeing how connected they are to the people of Egypt, to see how, how strongly beloved they were in that country for such a long period of time. So learning about the history is just as important in, than as learning uh, English is my first language. I'm not sure what's happening here. <laughs> uh, learning about the history of the Pantheon is just as important as learning as learning about, oh my goodness, the deity. So learning about everything as a whole is really, really important. So, and of course, again, I will, I will say as a disclaimer, I suppose that this is just my opinion. And this is just passing on my opinion to, you know, other people who may view things the same or may view things different. And I, I respect everyone's opinion. So to each their own. And I hope that, you know, you found this video useful and I hope to see you in the next one.